Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome to the channel. Thanks for tuning into this video. A couple months back, I put up a very short running video of some trailer rigs that I had put together, and I shared the uh, YouTube video to Facebook. And since then, I've had several questions on how I put them together and what I used for different things and tire sizes and things like that. So I thought I would put together a quick as possible video on showing how I put all these things together just for anybody that might be interested in building a trailer rig and just show you how easy it, it is. It's not that difficult at all. So also too in the video, I had a triple trailer, a triple gooseneck trailer, a double gooseneck trailer, and a single gooseneck trailer. And I've had a lot of questions on how I came up with the triples and the doubles. And so I'm gonna cover that too in this video. So I've got a lot of things to uh, go over. So just to make the video as short as possible, I'm going to go ahead and get into it. So uh, right here, you got the uh, Chevrolet Duramax. That's a 120 scale big country toys toy truck. And then right here, you've got the Dodge Dually. It's a 120 scale big country toys as well. And then in the back, you've got the Ford flatbed Dually. It's big country toys. FMS Power Wagon, FMS Atlas 6x6. The, the Atlas 6x6 is called a 118, but really the body, and this is a 24 scale. The bodies don't, actually this body, just visually, it might even look a little bit bigger to me. I, I don't know. But either way, I think they made really good trailer rigs. But as far as putting all this stuff together, uh, I'm going to do them individually. Uh, there is on the big country toys, which is these three, you got the Duramax. There is a slight difference between the Duramax compared to the, Fo uh, the Dodge and the Ford. And I will get off, uh, get to that, uh, here in just a moment. But first off, I'm going to start on the Chevy and show you guys what took, what was necessary to build the Chevy. And then we'll go from there. Okay. 120 scale, big country toys, Chevy Duramax. Um, I was able to put this together thanks to SKP Engineering uh, off Etsy and also 3D Slinkin. He also sells parts on Etsy. Um, the big country or the truck itself on this one, I actually bought this truck at a local Rural King. Um, the Ford flatbed and the Dodge, I bought those off Amazon. But these are $30 a piece, the trucks, um, give or take. And to put this thing together, thanks to the ingenuity of SKP Engineering, is where I got my stretch kit at. And there's really not a lot to it. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty simple. Um, I, I bought the truck and I had the truck before I actually received the stretch kit. And a couple things I was kind of curious on how it was going to work was you can't really tell it. I'm sure in the video, but this piece right here under the hood where you was, where you need to mount, mount the front at, it's not level. It's like this piece is up on the hood and this piece right here protrudes down just a little bit. So I was kind of curious how that was going to work. And then I was also curious on how the drive shaft was going to work. So, but obviously after I got the uh, stretch kit, everything made sense. Um, getting the stretch kit, you'll get this mounting piece right here. As I was mentioning a minute ago on the truck here, there is a little bit of a, uh, again, they're not level. You got one piece up against the hood and this piece kind of protrudes, protrudes down. Well, on this piece right here, if you can see that, let me, this piece, your front mounting bracket, he actually made that to where it fits this perfectly. Okay, but you'll get this, you'll get this body stretch piece right here. You'll get four links, your two uppers and your two lowers, and then you'll get this tube for your drive shaft. And on this piece right here, this was built on a JLU, SCX24 JLU chassis. And you need to remove your shock mounts 
your original shock mounts off the JLU, which it's two screws here and two screws on this side. And your shock mounts come out, and then this piece right here just slides in between your frame rail. Slides in perfectly, and then you got a screw here, screw here, screw there, and a screw there. That screws that into place, and it's got your shock mounts connected to it here in the back to where you can uh, attach your shocks on the top. And which, again, that's really simple. This was really simple. Just take your old piece out, one screw here, one screw here. Put that back in and you can adjust it proportionately to height and then on your uh drive shaft tube all that is is one long tube it's a hollow tube and i didn't realize it until i got to playing around with it but there's actually a stopping point inside the tube whenever you put your female into your drive shaft into that there's a stopping point and it's it's a good spot to glue but what you're recommended to do, let me get a drive, drive shaft here to make better sense. Okay, this is the female end of your stock drive shaft. It's not the one in there, obviously. It's just one that I had laying around just to, to where I could. And I'm, I'm not sure if this is the same length that comes on the JLU. This is just something I pulled out of my parts bin. But that's connected here to the back of your transmission. So all you got to do is remove this and cut your tube in half just cut it in half and then your piece that doesn't have your yoke on it that piece you just put some glue on the end of it and around the edges and whatnot and slide it in the end of this tube and again there is a i, I tried to look down that tube with a flashlight to see what actually that stopping piece was it looked like a piece of wire mesh don't hold that don't hold me to that um, i'm half blind so i'm not real sure but there is once you uh push your tube your stock tube into his tube into the skp engineering tube there is something where it'll stop at but you just push it in that side and let it let the glue dry and then this piece that has your uh yoke on it glue it up real good i put glue on the sides i put it on the end and then you just slide it down in there and just let the glue dry and then that way your male end of your drive shaft here slides in to this piece that you slid in on this side and then obviously your female goes into his female right there and you've got your yoke to reattach to your transmission so the drive shaft was really simple um as far as replacing the links they don't come with any ball studs on the end of your links so what i did was just took the stock links that i took out and popped the ball studs out of the uh, stock links and then just repressed them back into uh the skp engineering links and that way you've got something to run your screw through that was probably and that's not really hard, but as far as putting this thing together, that was probably the toughest part was just replacing the ball studs on the end of your uh, links. But after doing that, the links went in just fine. Uh, the drive shaft hooked up just fine. And then another thing, if you're going to, if you're building this trailer rig to pull a Big Country Toys trailer, uh, the tires on the... Uh, big country toy trailers are really small so you want this thing to sit as low as possible just so the trailer is a uh let me go grab one real quick okay here's the uh big country toys trailer and this is just a single trailer but the tires they're plastic tires but they're really small and so whenever you hook this thing up if you want both your tires To be flushed on the ground you want the truck to be as low as possible so um in order to do that you do have to make some cuts on the bed of the truck just so it will sit over your top of your shocks to where it has a nice low stance to where this hooks up correctly if you were wanting to take one of these trucks 
and make it a trail rig or if you have a way of making your own uh, if you can 3d print your own trailer or or do something with your trailer or you could put bigger tires on this trailer but you necessarily wouldn't have to cut the holes out you could have it set up a little bit higher um again if you wanted to put bigger tires on the trailer or make your own trailer or if you just wanted to make it a, a rock truck or a trail truck you don't necessarily have to cut these out but cutting these out is really that turned out to be not nearly as hard as i thought it was going to be you've got these lines in the bed of the truck and if you actually turn it this way i turned it this way and i had a light back here coming this way and when doing that i could actually see these lines on this side of the truck so i was able to cut from this side and kind of be able to follow my pattern and wherever you go to make that cut i would definitely recommend you use the dremel at least i used a dremel uh, you may have something better and this blade has definitely seen its better day but i do recommend using the smallest blade you can find just because it is kind of a tight fit but if you're cutting it from the back you got room to get to it through your wheel openings and you, again you can kind of see the lines to where you need to cut and the cut doesn't necessarily have to be perfect with this because after you get your cuts made you then can use a sanding piece on your dremel and again this has seen its better day as well but something kind of small to where you can get in there and just dremel it out clean it up a little bit make it look a little bit better and so cutting the holes out on the bed of the truck wasn't really difficult at all okay as far as the wheels and tires i actually got the uh it's 3d printed dually wheels and i got these from skp engineering as well he also sells the dually wheels and you just take your tire that you want to use and just basically pop them on you don't need any screws. They're not bead locks. You don't need to glue them. Um, they they hold on pretty good. And you got a your dualies for the back, and then your singles for the front. And he sells two different type of dually wheels. They're listed on on his site on Etsy. One of them will be the Big Country Toys dually wheels, and I think they've got a wider offset, just because this is a little bit wider, and it, it looks better on the. Uh, big country trucks if you're going to use a big country truck and then he has the regular dualies if he was wanting to put dualies say like on a c10 or something like that he's got the regular duties that doesn't have quite of a the wide of an offset to where it would look more normal on an actual scx24 yeah and also too i forgot to mention these trucks the bed and the cab is actually two different pieces and the piece that goes over the bottom of the truck, whenever it's fully put together, before you start whacking it and cutting it and all stuff like that, the bottom piece, I don't even know what you would call it, but it actually is what holds your bed to your cab. It slides down. You can't, you, you'd know what I'm talking about if you buy one, but it actually slides down. And then these two screws screw in to the bottom to hold it together so to keep this thing together i just cut out the bottom of the uh i guess we'll call it a skid but the bottom plastic piece that covers the bottom of the truck i just cut out a big enough piece to where it would catch these screws to hold it together and you've got to cut out this piece right here on the uh, truck once you get your bed and cab together and that's just so it can uh, fit like so and again gets that nice low stance which nothing to that at all a dremel I, I cut it out with the blade and then I used the uh, sanding piece to uh, clean it out some to make it fit a little bit better so that's really all the cutting you have to do on this um, the tires that come on this truck, whenever you first buy it, the actual toy tires that are on there, they're the same size as the tires that are on the trailer. So they're tiny. And 
if you're going to use on this, I use on the uh, Chevy. I'm using one inch tires. Uh, it's RC four wheel drive dirt grabbers. It's about the smallest uh, 1.0 tire I could find for the SCX 24. Um, a couple other tires. I don't even remember the names of them, but I, I couldn't really find any tires smaller than these because I was wanting to not have to do any dremeling around the wheels, but I had to anyway. Um, if, if you don't dremel out any off, off your uh, front bumper and around your wheels, you're probably not going to have a lot of luck steering this thing because the, the rubbing was pretty bad. So that's it with the body on and the one inch tires, the uh, dirt grabbers. And I've got just enough room now to turn after just cutting out a little bit off the back. I had to cut out some on the front for, off the bumper so I could turn that way, but there is no rubbing on it now. And uh, I was hoping to keep it. I was hoping not to have to do any, any dremeling, but yeah, wasn't quite so lucky, but still, I mean, it, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, as far as the motor on this one, I am running the uh, Fury Tech Komodo and the uh, Fury Tech ESE. The The only reason I put the uh, Fury Tech Komodo brushless in this was because I just had this motor extra at the time. I, I put this together probably two months ago. And I had that motor extra, and it it... it pulls everything just fine um i do use this truck to pull a triple trailer and i'm going to do a quick run here in just a minute after i go over the other trucks and i'm just going to kind of show you um as far as different motors that i got and how they pull and how they do uh pulling the heavy weight because the three rcs and i want to have them pulling are probably the three heaviest rcs that i have which all of my rcs are fairly heavy they're all built up pretty stout so it, they're pulling quite a bit of weight and the fury tech it screams a little bit whenever it's pulling but it pulls it just fine but i do plan on eventually maybe in the next couple of weeks i'm going to take the uh, fury tech komodo out of this just because i mean how often are you driving the trailer rig i mean they don't get driven near as much as the other rcs that i actually use to rock crawl so i'm probably going to put a uh, mofo a uh, bus saw in this and that gives me a, a brush list to put into something else and it also gives me the ESC I can use on something else and the uh, muffle bus saw that's what the uh, Dodge Dually is running and it's pretty sweet it, it's not th as loud as the other motors and even pulling three heavy rigs uh, the Dodge will just get up and fly but that's pretty much it for the uh chevy uh stock shocks yeah i don't i didn't want to go with any extra long shocks or anything like that just to make it set any higher because honestly even with these uh yeah i probably went with a little bit too much velcro in the back too uh, i need, probably need to take a little bit of velcro off because once you do, I can tell you, once you do get it set on there, it ain't going anywhere. But with about the smallest one-inch tire I could find, even still, if you can tell, that front wheel, if there's weight on there, It'll kind of turn that wheel, but it doesn't sit quite low enough. Luckily, this thing pulls a triple, and since the triple trailer is so long, uh, that allows the uh, both wheels on the triple trailer to pull, and it, it works correctly on the triple, which, again, it's, it's an RC. I know it's not that big of a deal, but uh, I kind of want it to work correctly, and... I think with a little bit of weight, yeah, even with a little bit of weight, both wheels still aren't flushed on the ground. But doing the triple, it works out just perfect. But that's what it took to do the Dodge. 
or excuse me, that's what it took to do the Chevy. So I'm going to go over the differences between the Chevy and the Ford and the Dodge, which the Ford and the Dodge are basically the same. They're different than this, and it's all due to wheelbase. So let me grab one of those. Okay, here's the Ford. And the wheelbase... I don't know if you can tell by looking, but those two wheels are level. But as you can see right there, the wheelbase is shorter compared to the Chevy. So the Chevy's got the longer wheelbase, and I didn't know that. So I ordered two more stretch kits, and I ordered these two off Amazon at the same time, thinking that the wheel, there wouldn't be any difference. So obviously, whenever I got uh, got these trucks, the first thing I did was put it next to the Chevy, and I was like, "Well, what do you know? You know, the wheelbase is the wheelbase is slightly shorter, so I might have just messed up." So I was just thinking, "Well, now I'm stuck with two toy trucks and uh, two more stretch kits that I may not end up using." So a day or so went by, and then it just all of a sudden hit me. Well, wait a second. What if I put dead? I take the uh, JLU links, the front links off, and I replace them with deadbolt front links. So I actually had two C10, two C10 RCs that I had purchased, and the only reason I purchased those because I've already got two C10s that I run now, two SCX24 C10s, but I bought two extra just to have something that I could change bodies on because I was looking for some different bodies. And then I thought, well, C10 chassis, yeah, I think you're recommended to use a JL, JLU chassis, so I don't know if a C10 chassis will work. But when looking at it, the main thing that needed to match up was these screws right here just need to line up. And on the uh, C10 chassis, these screws are in the exact same spot as they are on a JLU. I do know on a Gladiator chassis, this will not work on a Gladiator chassis because the holes that you need to mount this piece do not match up right here. But I had a, C, a couple C10 chassis, and actually I, uh, I went ahead and took my uh, Chevy. I took the Chevy before I got started on it, and I broke it apart. And I replaced the front links on the Chevy because the JLU front links are the same length as the C10 front links. So I went ahead and took this apart and I took uh, the JLU links off in the front and I removed the drive shaft and then I put deadbolt front links on it and I put this on that and wow, the, the, the uh, wheelbase matched up perfect. So in short, that's what I ended up doing on this. I took a C10 chassis and I removed the C10 front links and drive shaft and I replaced them with deadbolt front links and a deadbolt drive shaft. And I have three deadbolts and I've had those three. That's probably the three of the ones that I've had just about the longest. And all three of my deadbolts, I've modified them. I've stretched the front end. I've uh, add brushless motors to them and all the stuff up front's been cut out, uh, different links. So the reason I'm saying that is on the C10 chassis, whenever I put on the deadbolt front links, it wouldn't come all the way up. And you can see it's kind of even taking my, it's still hitting my receiver. But I had to remove the receiver tray and cut it out to where it wouldn't hit on top of the servo. Or excuse me, yeah, on the back part of the servo, it was hitting the uh, receiver tray. So I don't know what the difference is between the deadbolt front end, because again, it's been so long since I've seen a stock deadbolt, because I don't think that was an issue on the deadbolt. But yeah, if you uh, put front links, and I would imagine it would be the same on a JLU as well. If you put deadbolt front links wanting to run one of these two trailer rigs, uh, you're probably going to have to cut out some of your receiver tray. It, it, this may work on a deadbolt chassis. Uh, again, it's just a matter of 
if these screws line up correctly to fit this piece right here. But in short, that's how I uh, came up with the shorter wheelbase for the Dodge and the Ford flatbed. Uh, the wheels and tires, wheels are again the exact same thing as on the Chevy. It's uh, the Dually 3D printed wheels I bought from SKP Engineering. And But the tires, I didn't want to, I was hoping to maybe get out of having to Dremel any around the wheels on these two rigs. So on the tires, I actually went with... Um, Enduro tires, which I had taken off this, which this is just an Enduro element that is on an SCX24 chassis. But I had the tires left over, and the tires on the Enduros are smaller. They're only 0.7 inch. Which is why I wanted to use these. They are smaller. Let's see, I got a... Uh, this is the dirt grabber here, a, a loose dirt grabber I've got. And if you can see in that, the Enduro tires are quite a bit smaller. So I was hoping that using Enduro tires, and keep in mind, 0.7, that's not really the total size of the tire. That's just the center hole. So the center hole is point, I, I guess that's three quarters of an inch, 0. 0.7, but the center hole is smaller. So, which actually made it fit over these uh, 3D printed wheels a little bit better, but these tires don't come with any foam. There was, and also too, I had to remove the tires I had off the Enduro, off the wheels they came on in order to get them on these wheels. So. I know some wheels that have, or some tires that have been glued onto the stock wheels, they're kind of a pain to get removed. I put a heat gun on these tires when they were still on the stock wheels and they came off in literally, I'm guessing 30 seconds. They popped off really easy and I had to order some extra because obviously two for the, on each side for the rear, well, that's four tires off a regular RC. So I went to Horizon Hobby and I bought the, uh, I bought some extra Enduro tires off Horizon Hobby, but they already came mounted to the wheels, which again, I just put a heat gun on them, took them right off, popped them on this, on the uh, 3D printed dually wheels, popped them on the fronts. And whenever I would run with them, since there wasn't any foam, they wanted to fold over. They kept folding and they wasn't coming off the bead, but they were just getting sideways and crooked and whatnot. So I ended up popping them back off and I got some regular 1.0 uh, tire foam that I had. And since the diameter of the hole is bigger on the foam than what it is on the tire, I actually had to cut them in pieces. So I had to fill in the foam in pieces on here just to keep the tires from turning sideways and, and just all that stuff. So these tires do have foam in them. And uh, again, that was a little bit of a pain, but hey, it is what it is. But yeah, 0.7 inch uh, element Enduro tires filled with foam and pieces, pops, pops them over. It worked out pretty well. But on this one, on the Ford, I'm running the uh, red Enduro motor. And as far as pulling the three heavy uh, RCs on a triple trailer, pulls it just fine. Uh, not really a whole heck of a lot of top speed. And, but I mean, it pulls it. It doesn't seem to uh, have much of an issue, but I will tell you, uh, the Fury Tech Komodo screams just slightly whenever I'm pulling three trailers with it. This Endura screams like crazy, which you'll hear that here in just a few minutes. But yeah, it does get kind of loud, but hey, it gets the job done. So it gets loud because this thing's a diesel. Uh, that's what it is. It's that diesel motor kicking in. Um, as far as trimming out the back on again, that's two pieces. Uh, the bed, 
and the front. And again, I've just kind of, once I slide, slide the rear or the bed into the cab to where it goes down in the slots, I actually used washers on this one to uh, screw down into to keep the body connected together to where it wasn't falling apart and I didn't have two separate pieces to uh to mount but when cutting this out you do have to do some cutting on the Ford flatbed you got to do some cutting on the Dodge as well the Dodge very pretty much the same thing as the Chevy but on the uh, Ford flatbed whenever I was cutting out here on the sides to get these holes out the uh the hole piece that your trailer fits into apparently i somehow managed to cut to where this came loose <laughs> and so i'm still not sure how that worked out so this is attached a little differently than on the chevy and the the dodge but all i ended up doing was i uh, put some uh, glue on the bottom of this round piece that your uh, gooseneck trailer goes down in into and once I got it down in there, I kind of let the glue dry for a minute. And then I just drilled holes in it and I put some screws, ran some screws through it and put some nuts on the backside to make sure that it stayed in place. But yeah, just be aware of that. If you happen to get the Ford and do some cutting, if you end up cutting too much, you're going to cut it to where this whole piece that your trailer fits into, it comes loose. And then you'll just have to figure out how you reattach that, which again, that wasn't that troublesome at all. But uh, running the, uh, and, and of course, too, on all three of them, you got to cut out this center piece right here to where it'll fit over your rail on your chassis. But uh, so once you get it on, I mean, the uh, wheelbase turns out about perfect using the deadbolt front links. Same on this. Uh, I'm not going to go over the Dodge too much. Um, again, it's uh, same wheelbase as the Ford. Ford, Ford, and Dodge have the same wheelbase. They're slightly shorter than the Chevy. So just be aware of that. But on the uh, Dodge, oh, and all, you don't need, whenever, if you order the uh, stretch kit from SKP Engineering, this front mounting piece that comes for the Chevy that I think you kind of, hopefully you saw it in the video a little bit earlier to where it's kind of gr uh, like a step. You don't need to use those on the Dodge and the Ford because on the inside of the Dodge and the Ford, whenever, where they mount, it's flat. So you can just use your stock mounting piece for the Ford and the Dodge and then everything else mounts up the same, just... Remove your shock mounts, slide that into place, pop in your four screws, attach your shocks to the uh, shock mounts here, replace your rear links, glue your drive shaft up really good. Uh, on this, on the Dodge, I am running the uh, Mofo RC buzzsaw, and just, I, I think I mentioned it earlier in the video, this thing will fly. Even pulling three heavy RCs, it gets up and goes, so. And it's not as loud. It's not as loud as the Enjora and the uh, the Fury Tech. So yeah, cutting out the back of the Dodge, pretty much the same as the Chevy. Uh, put your light up on this side to where you can kind of see what you're doing and then just cut it from the bottom, then dremel out your cuts. Cut that piece out right here in the center. You got a trailer rig. Um, the, uh, stretch kit, I, I probably should have looked it up before I uh, made this video, but it seems like when I bought my stretch kit, it was about, they're about $30 a piece. And I don't remember the price on the wheels and tires. Uh, I don't, I, I'm not even going to say because I don't remember, but it's SKP engineering off Etsy is where I got the stretch kits and the wheels. So now we'll get into the FMS. Okay, FMS Atlas 6x6. Six six. It looked to me, the only reason I bought this was specifically for a trailer rig. I've seen it online. I've 
seen a couple videos and I just thought, you know, it kind of looks like a uh, trailer rig. So by golly, I'm going to get one. I'm going to make it a trailer rig. So pretty much all I did to make this a trailer rig was I removed the roll bar section here in the back. Um, and again, it was about two months ago when I put this thing together, two or three months. So I don't remember exactly what all that entailed. I, I don't think, I think it was just some screws. And then you're, you remove that roll bar piece on the back. I got rid of the spare tire mount. Um, I, I took off the uh, wheels and tires that came with it. And these are actually the tires that I got on there now are SEX 24 deadbolt stock tires. And they don't come with any foam. So what I ended up doing with these, I, I wanted some foam in these tires because it seems like I tried it without the foam and the front end had a harder time steering and they were squatting down really bad. It just didn't look right having deflated tires on a trailer rig. So I got the, uh, I took deadbolt tires, put a heat gun on the wheels and heat gun. I had to heat gun these. These were a lot harder to get off than the element enduro tires. But after putting heat uh, heat gun on it, I removed them off the stock wheels. And after doing that, the stock wheels were garbage because I basically melted the wheels. But the tire, or the, excuse me, the wheels that I'm running are wheels that came with some Proline Hyrax tires that I had ordered. And they're uh, bead locks, but they're plastic. And I didn't really, I just wanted, whenever I bought the Proline Hyraxes, I just wanted the tires. I didn't really want the plastic beadlock wheels anyway. So luckily I had several sets of them. I had enough to uh, uh, make this a dually on the tandem axles in the back. And I had had enough for the front as well. But I ended up taking the tires and I put foam in them. And then I just mounted them on the Proline Hyrax plastic beadlocks. And as far as making the dualies, there's a kit you can, again, get off Etsy. And it's from 3D Slinkin. And it's specifically for the Atlas 6x6. It's a dually wheel adapter. And it's super simple to install. Uh, not really going to go into that. Because you can actually, if, if you do get the uh, dually wheel adapters... For the Atlas 6x6, just go to YouTube and search up 3D Slinkin. He's got a video on how to mount these and to make the adapters work for the dualies. It's about a five or six minute video. Super simple, super easy. But I mounted up the dually wheels in the back, got them put on, got the fronts put on. And as far as being able to hook the fifth wheel to the trailer, I just bought this fifth wheel hookup piece off Etsy. And I don't remember the seller that I got this from, but this was actually supposed to go on an SCX 24 C10. And I saw that on Etsy and I thought, you know, that may work on the Atlas. Let me try it out and see. And so sure enough, when I got it, put it on there, it looked like it was going to work out just perfect. So again, put some Gorilla Glue on the bottom of this, put it down into place, held it, let it glue for a few minutes, drilled holes in it, ran screws through it, and just put nuts on the back of the bottom of the screws that you probably can't tell on there. But yeah, it's just nutted down with uh, regular SCX 24 screws. Uh, it's on there pretty good. Ain't going anywhere. Um, as far as performance, I've not done anything on the inside of this yet, but I'm going to very soon. I don't know if I got a bad unit and I'm not familiar with the Atlas 6x6. This is the only one I've ever owned. But when I'm pulling a trailer with RCs on it with this, and it seems like, especially if I'm like making a tight turn or something like that, the ESC cuts out. So it just stops. I'll, I've still got steering, but the ESC quits working. So I, I, I go to power it off and it won't power off. I've actually got to unplug the battery. And then I replug the, replug the battery back in, and then it'll go. And then it seems like a minute or two later, the ESC cuts out on it. I'm not sure what that's all about. And the motor, the stock motor, is not the most powerful. 
I've got a slight incline. I've got a sidewalk in my backyard and it's got one section where it's got a slight incline to it. And that's probably what I'm going to run these on just to give you an example of the motors. Whenever they go to pull this, whenever they go to pull the trailer with three heavy rigs on it, this will make it up the incline. And again, it, it's not that type of an incline. I mean, I'm talking like, I don't know, maybe like say that. But this has a hard time. It does make it up to the top, but it's like, mm, I mean, it, it, it's at a snail space, and you can actually smell the motor after you run this for a minute or two pulling that trailer. So, but if you're only going to be pulling one one rig on a, if you wanted to use this for a trailer rig and you're only going to be pulling one RC, probably wouldn't be that big of a deal. But with three heavy rigs on the on a trailer that this thing's pulling, it has a bit of a struggle. So, but again, that's it for the uh, Atlas 6x6. We'll get to the power wagon. Okay, here's the power wagon. And this one was probably the easiest to set up out of any of them. I've had this forever and a day. And uh, I don't know. I just, I, I kind of like my other crawlers a little bit better than I have this one. Um, and I have stretched the rear with the uh, McHugh, I think it's McHugh, uh, longer links in the back. And it's got a Gladiator rear drive shaft in the back. So I'd already stretched it, and I was just kind of thinking, you know, man, this thing looks, this also looks like a trailer rig. So since I already had it stretched, um, here's, a, here's one that hasn't been stretched. And it's just, I don't know, I, I, I Kind of just got this thing for spare parts, just in case I ever need it for this. But all I did to uh, set this up to pull a trailer was this piece right here. I was going to go here, but on this one, but it was just, I know that's kind of where a fifth wheel would normally hook up in between, kind of in between your rear axle. But it just was too much rearward weight on this, so I wanted to move the uh, trailer to where it would hook up a little more toward the cab just to position that weight also a little bit up front so on this piece right here and i don't remember the size drill bit i used but i just drilled a hole in that piece going across right here that was the same size as the piece of the trailer that will actually fit down into it and after i drilled that hole which I've got this square piece on there now. That square piece is from a SCX24 receiver tray. I just cut down the legs, cut off the legs off the receiver tray. I mean, it, it looks more like a fifth wheel hookup than that. But I just cut the legs off, kind of dremel down the sides, uh, put that on and I screwed a hole here, screwed a hole here. And then I ran a, a screw through it and, uh, I drilled a hole, excuse me, drilled a hole, drilled a hole. And again, it's got, it's nutted on the bottom. And again, you probably can't see it in the video, but it's actually screwed on. And then I drilled the hole to where the trailer would fit through that. Where's my trailer? And this thing pulls a single, single trailer, thanks to the shocks. Whenever you do put weight on this, here, let me see something to put some weight on here. Yeah, whenever you get some weight on it, it does pull both axles in the rear. So, Worked out perfect. Uh, this was really easy to set up. Probably the easiest out of any of them. I did swap out the, I needed smaller tires to lower it down some in order for it to pull the trailer correctly to where both axles on the trailer would be, both front and rear wheels would turn whenever I'm using it. So I went with smaller tires, uh, Goodyear Wranglers on that. Uh, put some blue wheels on there just to kind of match the trailer a little bit. Um, as far as pulling 
surprisingly, and this thing, uh, it's not a dually. I've thought about making this a dually. Um, I probably, I maybe, I'm, I may will eventually, but I will say that pulling a triple trailer, this thing probably does it as well, if not better than all of them. I mean, that little incline on my sidewalk I was talking about earlier, it pulls three, tr three rigs up that incline like it's effortless. And when, whenever you're making sharp turns, pulling three rigs with this, the front end doesn't come off the ground. It stays planted. Uh, again, it pulls it almost effortlessly. It, it, I'm not going to say it does better than the Dodge and the Chevy and the Ford, but compared to the uh, FMS Atlas, this thing's set. You don't need to upgrade the motor. The ESC doesn't cut out. And on the FMS Atlas 6x6, ever so often when making a real sharp curve, pulling a triple trailer with the Atlas, the front wheel will kind of come off the ground a little bit. But not on this. It stays planted, and it pulls it like it's not even an issue. Uh, but that's it as far as the the rigs go. And now I've, I've also had a lot of questions. Well, where'd you get the triple trailer and uh, where'd you get the double trailer? Yada, 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 yada. So all the trailers that I put in that video and all the trailers that I use, I've got two triples, I've got two doubles, and I've got one single. And they're all big country toys trailers. But you can only get a big country toys trailer in a single trailer. So I wanted something that could pull three RCs and I looked at online and found a few places that would 3d print and it was massively expensive, uh, four to $500 to get a decent trailer that would pull three RCs. And I was just like, well, you know, that's, that's kind of crazy. Maybe I'll just keep them pulling single trailers. But then I got to looking at this big country toys trailer and they're plastic the thin plastic. I mean, they're durable, but it's just, again, just plastic. But what really caught my attention was this piece and this piece. Hopefully you can see that, but it's got this piece coming down and that piece coming down. So I thought, you know, if I could get my cuts right and figure out the best way that I can think of to attach these, it's got this rail to, to where each piece presses up against and that kind of keeps it from bending and things like that. As long as I can get the front and the back to line up on these. So what I ended up doing to make my triple trailers, what you can see here in the back is this back piece. I whacked one of the, I used a jigsaw, real fine blade, uh, the smallest blade I got. And the, the main thing, if you ever decide to do this, the most important thing to do it is to make sure that whenever you make that cut across your trailer, that it's got to be straight in order for them to connect up against each other. But as long as you can make that cut perfectly straight. So on this, on the rear of this trailer, that's just where I whacked it right behind the step, cut that off there. That gives me the rear. So for the middle section, I made a cut here, and then I made a cut right before the bend comes down. I made a cut right there, and then I removed the wheels. That's my middle section. And then the front section, well, I just made one cut right across the back, removed my wheels, and that's my front section. And when, on my double trailers, I just cut the back off for the front and I cut the front off for the back. And as, as far as connecting these things together, after I got my three pieces connected, turn it upside down and So this is my gooseneck right here. I leave the gooseneck hanging over the edge of the tra table and I got some Gorilla Glue. I glued down the edge of the front 
and then I put glue on the edge of this, the end of this piece. And that's not for securement. That's just more or less just to hold it together. But I put glue on this piece, glue on that piece. I put glue in here, glue on that piece. And then I just laid them down flat, put them together, kind of pressed them together like that, like so. I don't know, for five or six minutes, just until that glue held it enough. And the main reason I was doing, putting glue on the edges of the, each side is just to keep it still while I'm mounting this. And I got these metal strips from Home Depot. Uh, they come in one piece. I think you can get them in tw uh, 24 inches, 36 inches, whatnot. Uh, I don't remember the length piece I got. It wasn't massively expensive. I think it was six or seven bucks. But I got this, whacked them five or six inch pieces doesn't really have to be exact because you don't ever see these but i went ahead and with these pieces of metal i went ahead and pre-drilled two holes on each side and so after i uh whoop let me zoom in on that a little yeah i, I pre-drilled that's what all these little holes in my uh my table is, but I pre-drilled a hole here, hole here, hole here, hole here. And after I pre-drilled them, I got again, Gorilla Glue and I put Gorilla Glue on the back of the metal strip on each one. I just smothered it in Gorilla Glue, flipped it down, held that in place. I don't know, two or three minutes. And then I let that dry. And then after it finished drying, which it probably wasn't dry completely, but dry enough to hold it to where it wasn't going to move, I then ran the drill bit through the holes I already drilled and just popped a little hole through the trailer. That way my holes line up. And, and not only is this being held by screws, but it's also being held by the uh, Gorilla Glue. But then I just put a screw on it, put a nut on the back side. And voila, got a triple trailer and it's very secure. Um, you know, I don't, not too worried about it coming apart on me. Um, I've only done this to this one trailer, but as, and that's what I'm going to use in a video, but these little pieces are wall mount type things. I got from Walmart. I've ha I had them here laying around and I thought, well, I'll put them to use. But they just stick on, you use them to stick on a wall and they've got like little hooks. And I'm, I'm using those. I've got them set up for the RCs I want to be using on this video. I'm just gonna run a, run a rubber band. That's just to hold down the wheels on the RCs. So the RC don't come off the trailer while I'm making a video. But yeah, that's all it took to uh, put together the triple and double trailers. They're big country toy trailers. Uh, I think the the trailers, you can get those as well from a local Royal King, Amazon, eBay. And again, the price, it varies. I've seen some of them. You can get one of these trailers for 20 bucks and then I'll see them for 45 from another seller. But uh it's a cheap, easy way to make a triple trailer without spending five, six hundred dollars. On and again, it, it does just fine. It uh holds them up. Ain't worried about it breaking. But that's how I put the trailers together. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw some RCs on here. Take these things outside and just run them a little bit, just to show them what I'm referring to as far as different motors and whatnot and uh, maybe give you an idea what kind of motor you want to put in your trailer rig. So, folks, stay tuned. Uh, got some pulling video coming next. Stay tuned. Okay, I got my trailer set up, and these are, again, probably the three heaviest RCs that I have. Uh, the Chevy in front's got the hard body. It's got uh, brass boulder bars, aluminum portal axles, SSD uh, brass wheels, 
and then the Walmart special, you know, the body on it's heavy on its own right. And then it's got the Enjora uh, brass beadlock deep dish wheels. They're like 47 grams a piece. Aluminum portal axles, uh, boulder bars, probably other stuff on there I put on, I'm just not thinking of. And then the uh, Element on the uh, SCX24 chassis, it's got uh, the heavy Enjora deep dish wheels, brass uh, boulder bars, aluminum portal axles. Uh, they're, with all three of these on there, I mean, it's just about heavy enough. A weightlifter could probably do arm curls with it but quite a bit of weight. And then there's the uh, five rigs I'm gonna run on it. I'm gonna take it around the corner here and run it up the little incline that's going up my sidewalk in the backyard, just to uh, give you guys an idea of different motors and how they pull and how they work and everything else. So folks, with that being said, I'm gonna hook the uh, Chevy Duramax up to it first. Stay tuned. Trailer pulling, coming up. Okay, this right here, that's where I got the RC set up, but this is the uh, incline that I was talking about. You may not be able to see it on camera that well. Not massively steep, but it does come up some right here around the curve. So uh, we'll see what the Chevy's got. And again, he's running the uh, Fury Tech Komodo. And that's full throttle right there. Makes it up the hill pretty easy. And again, you do need to do a little bit of dremeling around your wheels so the tires don't rub. And then coming back down the hill, easy peasy. Turns just fine. Front end stays on the ground. You can see here. That's the Chevy. That, that motor is actually not that loud. Okay, I'll hook up the Ford flatbed next. Stay tuned. Okay, I got the Ford hooked up. And he's running the Enjora red motor. That thing's screaming. It's a diesel. It's coming up on the incline. Yeah, he did it pretty good. This is, that is full throttle. <laughs> but again, he's pulling a lot of weight. It's a diesel, folks. Yeah, and the Big Country Toys trucks, they are 120 scale. I personally think that axial being a 124 scale i think axial made them a little big so that's another good thing about the uh big big country whoop uh, trying to record and drive that don't work but as far as size comparison i think the size is pretty close and I did mention that I'm running the Endora 0.7 inch tires on the Ford and the uh, Dodge. You still have to do a little bit of dremeling on the front bumper, a little bit around your front wheels, but not as much as I did on the Chevy running the uh, 1.0 dirt grabbers. That's the Ford. 
hook up the Dodge next. Okay, next up is the Big Country Toys Dodge Dually. And it is running the uh, MoFo RC bus saw. Pulling the same trailer, same RCs. Let's see what he can do. Yeah, yeah he's <laughs> getting up and going. No problem at all. He's got a Hemi. A Dodge has a Hemi. Scooting right along. Okay, that's the Dodge. Next, I'm gonna hook up the Atlas 6x6. Stay tuned. Okay, I got the Atlas hooked up to it. And I think I mentioned it earlier in the video that I have had problems with the ESC cutting out on the Atlas. Hopefully it uh, makes this little, stays running long enough to uh, get this clip in in the video. We shall see. And right now he's on smooth ground. And now he's fixing to make the incline. And I've got it pulled back as far as it'll go. Come on. He does make it. It's not actually as slow as I was thinking, but it is a little slower than the others. You know, whenever I uh, upgrade his motor, oh, I am going to put a MoFo RC bus saw in this. I'm going to swap out the ESC as well. I'm just going to use the SCX24 receiver. I'm going to plan on putting in it. But he ain't doing bad. And then again, I may not upgrade it just for a trailer rig. I mean, again, how often am I going to be driving it? Yeah, he, does. he has a hard time making those sharp cuts. It's like he's a little light on the front end, see? There it goes. For some reason, when I'm turning sharp, throttle quits working. Let's see if I can turn him around here. Yeah, that front end's kind of light, so it, it is kind of tough to make turns. You'd think it, having that long of a wheelbase, Kind of hard to get him backed up. It's full throttle on reverse. I can't get him to back up. He won't back up. So I can't get him turned around. I want to just pull him through the yard. That's all he's got. Enough for the Atlas, let's hook up the power wagon. Okay, I got the power wagon hooked up. Same trailer, same RCs. I want to drive him first and low, which again, I'm sure everybody knows, but those of you that don't, uh, the FMS power wagon does have a split transmission. You got a uh, high and low. First go will be in low gear. It's a little slow. Didn't really slow down at all. Maybe just a tad in low. But best I can remember, 
Yeah, he corners and turns beautifully. Okay. Switch him up to high. Turns with no issue. Backs up with no issue. Now let's bring him up the incline and high. Whoop. Yeah, it's full throttle. Yeah, he's slowing down in a high. High doesn't like the hills. Putting back to low. Which, whenever I'm using this trailer rig for regular purposes, the power wagon, I got him pulling a uh, single trailer, hauling the Walmart special there in the center. And that's the only one he'll, he'll typically pull. I just wanted to hook him up to a triple just to show you. More than capable of doing it. He's in low right now. Which I'm assuming that's about all he's gonna have without the trailer hooked up. Let's pull it out and see. Yeah, that's all he's got. Even not pulling the trailer in low gear. But he uh, pulls those three, no trouble at all. Well, that's about it as far as putting these things together. Um, as far as the FMS goes, um, I know some of you are going to say, well, my wheels are on too tight or something such as that. Um, they're not. Uh, I don't know if the Dooley wheels, it seems like I had a little bit of trouble with the ESC when it was fully stock. Just trying to run it over some of this mess uh, as far as the ESC cutting out, but the wheels are not on that tight at all. Um, I do plan on upgrading the, uh, I'm gonna take the stock receiver out, throw in a SCX24 receiver and put in the uh, MoFo bus saw motor. Um, and one thing I wanted to mention too, after you uh, put the bodies on, on these trucks, you can still power them on without taking the body off because if you can see right there, the sun's a little bright. But right there is my uh, Fury Tech ESC. You can reach it right under the side. And then as far as the Ford and the Dodge, you know, the side of the receiver is right there with the power button that you can just reach your finger up there, turn them on. You don't have to take the bodies on and off to power them on it's pretty easy um but it was definitely a lot of fun um it seems like it's been a while since i ran the trailer rigs and i, I was under the impression that the uh, power wagon would climb that hill a little bit better in high gear but i mean in low gear it did it just fine but it did seem to bog down a little bit in high but i mean it's still i mean it's planted it turns well and and keep in mind too that does have a stretch kit on it so if that was the power wagon stock wheelbase i don't think it would have quite as much luck i'd say the front end would probably be pretty light uh but the uh big country toys trucks the chevy the ford and the dodge they all stay planted whenever pulling a, a rig or a trailer with that heavier rigs on it they do just fine and uh but either way folks that's going to end the video hope you guys enjoyed it and uh stay tuned mm -hmm.